I'm going to just try and highlight, I, I think, a, a couple of the areas, uh, some of which we'll go into in more detail uh, through presentations during the day, uh, but some of the highlights, some of the areas of progress that we've made uh, in, in relation to health and life sciences and that sector in general uh, through King's Health Partners, uh, and in particular over this last uh, year or so. Um, but through that, actually highlight some of the important uh, opportunities that I think are most definitely uh, emerging uh, as government lays out uh, its revi revised vision for the life sciences. Uh, and I'll try and allude to some of the areas where I think King's Health Partners offers very specific strengths. So uh, this is an, uh, an opportunity, and I hope many of you, and uh, uh, it was sent out yesterday, um, were able to see the uh, report, our uh, King's Health Partners Impact Report for the last year, 2021. Uh, you will see in there many of the things that I'm just going to briefly discuss, uh, described in a little more detail. But I have to say, I do believe this makes very impressive reading. Uh, of course, this is the work of many across the partnership and in many instances, uh, working with colleagues out with our King's Health uh, Partners uh, um, uh, collective. And, and that is one of our strengths. Uh, because we have such a broad range of expertise within the partnership, we are able to draw upon and work with many other organizations, institutions, both in this country uh, and around the world. Um, but what, of course, we are still in, um, but have been through uh, the most uh, remarkable period of time as a consequence, of course, of the um, uh, explosion of concern and indeed direct health care need uh, through the pandemic as a consequence of the uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, emerging uh, around the world. We, I think, have much to be uh, proud of and recognize um, the efforts that have gone on in King's Health Partners. And I think what is particularly interesting is the speed with which we were able to bring colleagues together uh, to then uh, address some of the rapidly emerging challenges uh, that that required us to consider. I highlight here just three uh, areas, um, uh, but, but there are very many others. Um, the one, of course, that has received very significant prominence uh, for many, many months over the last period. It was hard to wake up in the morning not hearing of the latest uh, data release or uh, evidence that have been drawn from the uh, COVID uh, symptom study uh, run by colleagues across King's College London uh, and within King's Health Partners. Um, this is the uh, uh, Zoe COVID symptom study and the app. Uh, and you will know that through that, uh, many observations of direct importance uh, and helping uh, that were uh, used and helped inform government in relation to uh, key public health decisions that have been taken over this period of time. These include, of course, actually one of the most detailed characterization of the challenge of the prolonged symptoms they uh, associate with COVID, uh, long COVID as now described, uh, and very clearly uh, detailed through, through the application of the COVID study symptom. I highlight some of the uh, key figures, if you like, uh, about both not only the numbers of uh, folk contributing to this, a remarkable, well over 4 million, but not only that, um, the, the idea that you have folk continuing to provide uh, information through, through the symptom uh, study. And you'll hear more detail, as I've said, through the presentation later, uh, later this morning. It more broadly, and of course, King's Health Partners is not unique in this, but we were able to bring together uh, our expertise, particularly in areas of understanding uh, the nature of the virus, um, as well as, of course, particularly uh, the nature of the immune response following infection uh, or indeed following vaccination. And that has been incredibly helpful, of course, in understanding the uh, ways in which we can anticipate being able to move forward uh, through vaccination or as a consequence of large scale uh, of the uh, breadth and depth of uh, uh, infection that's now occurred. Uh, this is also, and we uh, you'll hear of uh, some other areas where this has been progressed by the partnership, um, contributed to development of new 
diagnostic tools, uh, again, through a number of the clinical trials, new treatments, or indeed even our more fundamental research and understanding uh, opportunities to develop new therapies. And, and, and um, through that, of course, uh, our broader contributions to the vaccination program itself, uh, with very, very large numbers of our local community now having been vaccinated through, through the partnership. And then there's a further area, and I think we are rightly proud of, but of course recognise that there's always more that can and should be done. Um, but we have we've been able to bring together a range uh, of expertise in the partnership to directly respond to the needs of our staff. And I think we are all aware and recognise just how challenging this last period has been for uh, the staff within the partnership, and particularly, of course, those uh, involved in direct uh, uh, delivery of healthcare. Uh, it, this really has been a, a most remarkable and challenging period, uh, and we're hugely grateful for all the efforts, all the work uh, that has gone uh, on. And I think through that, uh, the need for us to ensure um, everything is done to support the well-being uh, of our staff um, as they continue to respond to the ongoing challenges that uh, are around us. So if I could go to the next slide, um, and here um, just wanted to highlight a couple of areas. We've touched on uh, several of these in relation to digital, but just uh, also to recognize that one of the areas that we have really invested heavily in, but been supported um, by external uh, uh, investment is in uh, what we broadly describe as advanced therapies. You'll see here, uh, we were awarded uh, six million pounds to develop a, a gene therapy innovation hub, uh, and in particular, uh, to support the manufacturing of uh, the virus um, uh, structures required to deliver gene therapy. Uh, and this is, uh, we now have uh, one of the largest um, uh, capabilities in manufacturing in both the so-called adeno as well as lentivirus, uh, adeno associated virus as well as lentivirus. Um, well, I'm going to take a moment just to highlight another area where we've made great progress over the, uh, uh, over the period of the pandemic. Um, some years ago, I uh, talked at this meeting about a program um, I, I launched with colleagues at Queen Mary University, um, primarily through the East End of London, a program called Genes and Health. Uh, this is brought together as a community-based uh, population study, uh, a genetics genomic study, um, focused particularly on the Bangladeshi and Pakistani heritage families uh, and, and individuals mainly living in the East End of London. We've now extended this to uh, the centres and colleagues working in uh, Bradford uh, uh, and, and, and indeed Manchester in the north of England. Um, through this, uh, we have currently recruited over 50,000 uh, of the uh, local population with an ambition to get up to 100,000. But I, I'm, I'm delighted to say we also, through this, have made some remarkable observations. We contributed to the understanding of the genetic basis of predisposition to severe COVID, uh, uh, again, mainly because we had one of the largest groupings of folk of those uh, ethnic uh, uh, heritage uh, dimensions that had not been studied greatly uh, elsewhere around the world. Uh, and not only that, we have now and will be uh, announcing, but we have uh, certainly uh, formed agreement to develop a, a very large uh, industry partnership uh, to support the ongoing genetic studies uh, in this population. And, and we'll be um, launching uh, the detail of that in the next week or two. We talked already about the importance of health data uh, and the application of AI. And here, uh, I'm really pleased that we've made a, a lot of progress through our AI Center for Value-Based Healthcare. But not only that, of course, the broader application of technology is an area of importance and great focus for the partnership. And again, delighted that we have launched a Department of Surgical and Interventional Engineering, uh, which includes a fully established but mock uh, operating theatre, uh, you see here at the cost of some 10 million, uh, where we can apply 
AI to really developing improvements in the way in which surgical interventions are delivered. And I've referenced already our, our prominence in and uh, further developments around advanced therapies uh, and the award uh, from uh, uh, Government Research England uh, for a new advanced therapies accelerator is highlighted here. And if I can go to the next slide. Well, um, government is very focused on the strengths that, that we have here in the UK in the broader life sciences. And of course, this is seen as one of the very important areas for future development, uh, not only for the prospects of bringing improvement in health and well-being, but of course also to wealth uh, and wealth creation. Um, the areas that have been specifically referenced uh, as a consequence of the life sciences vision refresh, they're listed here, but I, I am just going to walk through these, not least because it, it allows us to just remind ourselves the strengths that sit within King's Health Partners that are relevant here uh, and why I, and I think many of us, believe there are uh, very significant opportunities. So um, the, the seven key missions that are highlighted within the UK Life Science Vision uh, include a very strong focus, uh, as one would uh, expect and anticipate, in trying to develop uh, and improve translational capabilities in the broad area of uh, neurodegeneration uh, and, and, and the consequential dementia uh, that follows. And, and we, of course, uh, have very significant strengths uh, in these uh, in this field uh, and, and contribute uh, to the national effort in relation to the UK um, Dementia Research Institute. In the broad area of diagnosis and treatment um, using immune therapies, particularly in relation to cancer, well, I've already referenced as a part of the response to COVID, uh, our capabilities in relation to immune monitoring. Uh, but equally, of course, through our advanced therapies program, we are in incredibly well placed to interdigitate between the application of those advanced therapies, particularly for the cancer care, uh, but also uh, determining the immune response to them. But through that, actually also asking the question of can we use uh, our better understanding of the immune response to create new therapies for the treatment of cancer. And I, I think you'll hear a great deal more of this over the coming uh, few years. Um, we do have significant strengths uh, in our understanding of uh, infectious agents. Uh, of course, you, uh, we're all aware that um, in the UK, we have major strengths in vaccine development in the Oxford um, vaccine, the, uh, AZ AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine is a, a great demonstrator of that. But we also have, as I've referenced, this incredible capability for the development uh, of uh, and, and manufacturing of vectors uh, that will also allow us to uh, contribute to this broad area of vaccine discovery, development, and manufacturing. In cardiovascular disease, well, Sally uh, uh, Morgan has very kindly already indicated not only where uh, we have enhanced, I think, our capability through the partnership with the Royal Brompton and Harefield uh, and areas that we very much seek to continue to develop, but we have very strong underpinning in relation to the science uh, of cardiovascular disease. Uh, and indeed also have for some considerable time sought to uh, work uh, very closely in the understanding of the metabolic, the, 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 the changes that occur, particularly as a consequence of the uh, problems associated with obesity as contributors to cardiovascular disease. And Sally also highlighted, and I think made it very clear that perhaps as much the opportunity that's arising as a consequence of the uh, merger is, is in relation to respiratory disease. This has been highlighted through the pandemic, the impact of course of the virus is primarily uh, on the lung uh, and uh, we've seen significant differentials in relation to those who have very severe consequences as a consequence of uh, uh, infection. But respiratory disease has been, I think, under under research, and I'm delighted that we at King, through King's College London, but in partnership uh, within KHP, 
um, have now uh, attracted a, a number of uh, leading, leading clinical academics uh, who are going to be uh, contributing through the partnership uh, to address aspects of the mortality and morbidity arising from uh, uh, long-term respiratory uh, ill health. And that, of course, is relevant not only to the UK, but around the world. An area that I think um, is of great interest, uh, and, and of course, inevitably, uh, something we all can express concern about is, is, is the process of aging. And, and remarkably, the, the, the relatively little understanding we have of the processes that contribute to uh, aging. And I made reference to the fact that, of course, the partnership goes beyond uh, our, our NHS Trust partners uh, together with the university uh, and extends into other dimensions as well. And, uh, across London, uh, working with our other AHSC partners, um, we have great capability to uh, really expand our understanding of these processes. But I also highlight the partnership that we have alongside uh, uh, Imperial College uh, and UCL uh, as founding partners with the Francis Crick uh, Institute, uh, the very large institute just uh, adjacent to St Pancras uh, Railway Station. And, and there, of course, there is an incredible capability, uh, some of which has been directly applied to a greater understanding of the biology of aging. And it's through our partnership with, uh, within KHP and working with colleagues, for example, at the Crick, that we can gain an understanding of the translational importance of any of those basic discoveries. And then the, the, you'll note here the, the last of these seven uh, missions that have been described uh, almost has King's Health Partners written on it, uh, and that is the greater understanding of mental health conditions. Uh, and, and of course, through uh, uh, working with our Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology, and Neuroscience, together with our Mental Health Trust, uh, and our broad ambition to integrate mental health and physical health dimensions to gain and recognize that these are not separate, they are fully uh, uh, intertwined and consequences arise through both, uh, 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 both of those uh, domains. And so uh, we wish to further accelerate our activity uh, across the age ranges uh, in relation to men mental health. And if we could just go to the next slide, so I've, I've hopefully given you a flavor of the areas that I believe King's Health Partners can and will uh, contrib contribute to. But it comes to the very core of what the partnership, the Northern Academic Health Science Center uh, and the broader system requires in order to make uh, progress uh, and make progress at pace. And it is the ability to work in partnership, but across the boundaries that we do know and recognize uh, exist particularly uh, ensuring that uh, working with regulatory bodies uh, and with industry, uh, we can ensure that this much more, a seamless mechanism of translation and of our discoveries uh, directly into health benefit. And uh, we are, are very pleased and delighted that we are now uh, engaging in clinical trials, which of course come not only from new drugs, but the integration of new diagnostic tools, as well as of course, uh, 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 um, medical technology and devices. Uh, we are running uh, a very large number of such trials, um, supported by uh, the uh, AI, the Artificial Intelligence Center uh, that we have created, <clears throat> so that we can assure ourselves that we're constantly engaging in the feedback of understanding the benefits that are arising from these interventions. And if I can go to my, uh, I think, last slide, if, if I could have the next slide, thank you very much. The, um, uh, the opportunities I think about I mean, for us at this stage to ensure that King's Health Partners and all who work within the partnership have the ability to access the, the tools, whether that be an easy route into that slim, seamless uh, uh, translational pathway, or indeed uh, the um, education and training so that they can utilize some of the uh, developing technology platforms, of course, particularly in relation to the uh, digital 
uh, arena, uh, the ability to understand and work uh, across uh, apply, uh, the artificial in intelligence platforms uh, and, and indeed gain access to uh, the development phases for our, our broader uh, workforce. So a, a very strong focus on our health and life science workforce uh, over the next period of time. And ensuring that we have, within King's Health Partners, created the platforms that can support the delivery. Uh, and, and I think we've heard already, but just to assure you, there will be uh, this exceptionally strong focus over the next period of time, not only in med tech, in the population genomics that I referenced, but other dimensions of that that we will be applying uh, uh, our, our work in advanced therapies, but of course, particularly uh, in this health data science space. All of that uh, seeking to ensure that we have a, a health and life science workforce uh, that can take uh, advantage of these opportunities, but of course, critically, uh, are there to deliver outstanding care in a new era of health uh, uh, for the future, not only for our local population, but of course, again, thinking globally. Uh, and, and just to finally reference, and we had a bit of discussion, a bit of debate in relation to health data and the desire to create the, the, the concept of a trusted research environment. Uh, you've also heard that our major trusts, uh, acute trusts, Guys in St. Thomas's and King's College Hospital are making very considerable investments in te technology platforms and data platforms. Uh, uh, the EPIC platform for uh, aggregation of health data uh, used as the primary tool for the management of patient care across those trusts. Uh, and, and in many ways, of course, uh, creating our own King's Health Partners. Uh, trusted research environment, which will need uh, more formal accreditation, but an incredibly important step uh, for us to take around uh, both uh, local uh, but population scale health management. So I, I, I would like to suggest to you that King's Health Partners is perfectly placed uh, to ensure that we are at the leading edge uh, of innovation into healthcare. Uh, and our role now is to ensure that we can allow all of those who are working within the partnership to access the tools they need uh, uh, to progress that innovation. Mm -hmm.